Shut up and sit down. Welcome to Trash TV Live, and do I need to even introduce this man? Uh, um, the Boo. Oh, that's it, that's the one. <laughs> Clint Boo, Clint, thank you so much. Thank you so the, much. the omnipresent. The, the boo. Om omnipresent. In yeah. fact, I, it, you've just blown my mind by reminding me that this is a big year for you, isn't it? I turned 60 in June, June the 28th, Glastonbury weekend. And then, and then you said you went to Glastonbury, I'm like... Yeah, nah, too much chaos for me. That. What, 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 <laughs> come on, you. But that's. Do you know th this is something about you? Because yeah, I've known you for a few years, uh, and especially since I've been up in Manchester, and you are like Peter Pan, and and you never seem to shy away. You're still in the thick of it. Whether that's <laughs> whether that's new music, gigs, or from a personal side, being a dad. You know, Clint is just one of the greatest dads, and you, you're so active in your family there. So. Mm. Th have you sold your soul to the devil? I don't know what, what happened really. I just I fell in love with music from an early age. I mean, it became an obsession. Everything went out the way. Football went out the window. Yeah. I was a biker for a while, motorcyclist. That went in... in you know, I in, never in knew extra. that. No, I was you a biker, yeah. I was, that, you? I, was, I had a big under gold wing in, in the, in the 80s. You? Yeah, the early 80s. And then I sold that to buy equipment for the band, basically, to, to okay. record and that. But what I'm saying, music just, has just pushed everything aside apart from family. You know what I mean? So you know, I'm, I'm blessed with five beautiful kids and yeah. a lovely wife, and uh, yeah. So it, everything in my own life's idyllic, which I'm blessed and I'm grateful for. But um, career-wise, yeah, this same thing. Really, it's just like I've, I've just busied myself being around music. I don't consider myself to be brilliant at any of the things I do, but because I'm passionate about it, people follow it and subscribe to it. You know what I, I mean? I, I think we disagree there because the I'm sorry. The I'm spirals are nothing short of <laughs> genius, mate. Yeah, mean, they're they're a great band, brilliant. you know, the contribution to that band Absolutely is... brilliant. You know, I'm happy with it, but I'm a shit keyboard player. I'm the shittest keyboard player <laughs> that's ever done Top of the Pops. I'm you know sorry, I mean? some of the best gigs of my life were in the late 90s, <laughs> the Clint Boone experience. Right, yeah. It, I mean, it, if, if anyone out there missed them, you, you missed a treat. They were properly bonkers, weren't they? It was at a time as well when there was nothing like it. Cause no. it was, it was like a, a, a show band, it was a cabaret band, and nobody yeah. was doing it. It was like, you know, what the Scissor Sisters ended up doing and what British Sea Power do to some extent, you know, the props on stage. Yes. And, it, and it, we were doing that at a time when fucking nobody was doing it. Yeah, it was like, absolutely. This was like um, 98, 99. Yeah, that's right. And it was me, because the Inspirals had taken a break, we took an eight or nine year break, and it was yeah. me sort of doing everything in the Clint Boone experience that I wouldn't be able to do in the Inspirals. Yeah. So it's fucking bonkers. It was I mean, madness. It we had was an opera singer, madness. Alfie Bo, the opera singer. Was yes. Al Al it was Al Alfie Bo. And if only I knew then that he was going to go on and, you know, be <laughs> Alfie Bo. And I was old name. <laughs> exactly. But we had, we had Alfie, and then when, when he couldn't make the gigs, we had a girl called Sarah. So he was opera dude. She was opera chick. That That's was her right. name. We had uh, my mate Oaksy playing tuba. He was tuba kid. And how I did Alfie, how did, because I, I remember him and I remember those gigs. What never crossed my mind now, later on, was... How did you know Alfie Bow? I, I, it's funny, isn't it? Because I was there uh, setting up this band, the Clint Boone Experience. I'd recorded all these mad songs at home while I was on my arse. Yeah. I think I might, <laughs> I might have talked about that another time. But um, yeah, so I was on my arse after, after the Inspiral split. I was, didn't have a great time for a couple of years financially. I was yeah. fucking broken. But uh, I just started writing all these mad songs that became the Clint Boone Experience uh, albums. And at some point, my friend Caroline Ellery, who's in the publishing trade, yeah. I told her about all these mad ideas I had for this band, I want to do things, I want to do collaborations that are unusual and not just be an indie band. And she phoned me up and she said, you know what you're saying about collaborating with unusual people? She said, we've just met, or my husband's just met this guy that's uh, a student opera singer, he's studied opera, okay. based in Fleetwood, called Alfie. So I said, right, let, let's, let, I'll ring him up. I rung him up and he's like, hello. Of course and you I, did. My name's Clint and uh, I believe you want to do some Something wacky, let's do it. So anyway, I, I picked him up, uh, took him to my house in Milner Road, had a little studio in the attic, and recorded enough stuff to spread over two albums, pretty much. Really? Um, but some really amazing, and again, nobody else was doing anything like it, you know what I mean? It was, it was outstanding how it was psychedelic, 60s-inspired pop, <laughs> but with an opera singer as well. Do you still have contact with Alfie? Yeah, we're still in touch, yeah. And he, we're still talking about doing more stuff together. Really? When I do my next collaboration, 
because there will come a point where I'm going to I'm going to call all these uh, people in and like well Paul Weller keeps saying let's do something together. So the idea of collaborating with all these amazing people that I know yeah. for an album, I'm going to do it at some point. But Well, it's your 60th year this year. Yeah, maybe this is a good year to do it. I think you should do I it. I should do it before we all start popping off, shouldn't I really? Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, so but do you think that music has kept you young? That's uh, such a cliche. Absolutely. But, it's, uh, it's just the, the finest medicine, isn't it? Well, music and love, it's like, if you're in a loving environment, it, it keeps you young and uh, passionate and music's the same to me. So and I'm, I'm fortunate, like I said, that... I've just busied myself around being around music, you know, whether it's in the 80s when I used to help bands, I used to drive bands, manage bands, record bands, you know, and like now I'm on the radio every day playing records and, and it's just being around that is what, gives you what, good energy. And what's funny is that you have literally worked with everyone. There's no one that doesn't have some kind of connection with Clint Boone, you know, and the obvious yeah. being Noel Gallagher, you know, yeah. remember him? Whatever happened uh, to him? Little fella. That's right, Lily. <laughs> Monobro. Married to, married to what's her name? No, we were, we're just we're having a, a little laugh before about Liam on Twitter being. Um, this is one of the weeks where Liam's been very prolific on Twitter having a go at Noel. I love them both. I, I'm still, you know. I was still... Say, what do you think when you when you when you see this? This week it was. It wasn't that aggressive. This week was it? It's, some weeks I think it gets a bit too angry, but generally I think it's funny. I think Liam gives good sound bites, Sonny, and you can tell, if you watch Twitter, like I do Twitter, you can tell that Noel's not even on Twitter, you know what I mean? No. He doesn't need to bother with that kind of shit, does he? But um, I think, I think I love them both for different reasons, you know, they're both completely different people, even though they're brothers, they're not, not similar in any way, really. And I, I don't want to make it serious or even put words in your mouth, but is it sad that as brothers you see them so far apart? Because there must have been times that you saw, personally, where, you know, they were a team. You know, I always think of Acquiesce, which I think is one of the greatest songs ever. Yeah. And it makes me really emotional. Yeah. And it makes me want to grab my brother and yeah. just, you know... Uh, give uh, him and, a squeeze. Yeah, give him a squeeze. So yeah. is that sad that you see the yeah, two Yeah, I, I think that's that's sadder. It's sadder that they're, they're not connected as brothers. That's sadder yeah. than, not, than Oasis not being there, I think. Oh, totally. And I think primarily, I, I wish they'd get together as brothers and, and you know, family. Especially while the mum's still alive, Peggy, because it can't be good for her to see it all. No. Uh, this, you know, her, her time of life, I mean, she's young for her age, obviously, but, um, yeah, you know, it's like, come on, lads, get the families back yeah. together. And but then uh, and the band might follow, you know what I mean? Yeah, and do and you know what? Yeah, I'd be all right if Oasis never got back together, but perhaps Noel and Liam, you know, as yeah. brothers did. It's like when you look back to some pictures, like you said, about that, that era, like, acquiesced and that, the amount of pictures of, and you can see they're in love with each other, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, like yeah. so yeah, it'd be nice to see that picture again, wouldn't it, like, yeah, in the present day, it hopefully. Would. I, I think it'll happen, I think it'll happen. And it, is that how you felt when you were on stage, whether it was with the Inspirals or, you know, did you feel like it was a team? I, absolutely, yeah. And there's something that I always got to say, I've never told anybody about this, but the Inspirals, I always got it, especially when we got back together in 2003 and onwards, after a nine year break where some of us saw it probably never happen again. Yeah. And I'd be playing, I could feel, it was almost like this invisible orb of energy above the stage. And I always sense that in my head, yeah. and I could feel it. Yeah. And that was the the team, the brotherhood. And I bet anybody in a band that's been together for that amount of years has probably has felt that. the same thing. You do feel that. And in fact, you you play when you go back together. Then we, we mentioned we mentioned your sixtieth year now, and I think that you should you and the family should get a bus and drive around all the festivals this year yeah. uh, and do something at each festival. And I think <laughs> you should go to Glastonbury. But when you got back together then in two thousand and three, you played the main stage. Didn't that's you, right. Yeah. Yeah. We did the pyramid stage. It was early on in the afternoon because we weren't a big deal, you know. We weren't a headline act at that point. We just got back together, but we did the uh, pyramid stage in the afternoon. But the funniest thing was, I went down to Glastonbury that day, not realizing that my favourite band of all time, REM, were headlining the pyramid stage that night. Oh, that was amazing! So instead of getting off site and going back to the hotel, or whatever, we, we decided to stick around. And Craig, our drummer, was an equally obsessive about R.E.M. Yeah. to the extent where his little girl is called Georgia because that's really? where, where R.E.M. from. Where they're from, yeah. Georgia's now 18, 19. Um, but, so we both decided to stick around in the open meeting R.E.M. later on in the afternoon. Brilliant. And we knew that the porter cabin that we had, we were in like a little uh, like backstage area with like eight porter cabins. And they usually rotate them. So these spirals one in the afternoon at some point will become, you know, the one that the food fighters might use. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, we found the one that was going to be REM's um, port cabin, <laughs> and we just we were getting leathered all afternoon. We were just oh, drunk, and no. um, and and George, the little girl, was with us. Um, Craig's little girl, and eventually, 
two of the lads out of our MP, but not Michael Stipe, uh, Peter Buck and Mike Mills. And they came over talking to us because we were playing with lightsabers with, with Georgia. Right. You know, like battery operated lightsabers. So the two lads out of our M came over, me and Craig are like, I fucking have him. <laughs> and then suddenly Michael Stipe arrives, walks over to, the, uh, to where we were because his, his mates were with us. He starts lightsabering with Georgia, and the enemy photographer that year, who was backstage, got this magical shot of Georgia uh, lightsabering no. the, band, the band that she's named after. And anyway, it became the pullout poster in 2003. The enemy, they always do this thing, they do an aerial shot on the other right, side. Yeah. And then on the other side, it's a, an iconic shot, and it was, it was Georgia Gill with uh, Michael Stipe doing the lightsabers. But as well as that, all afternoon, I'd been showing off to Georgia because she was a nipper at the time, and I was showing off doing this, catching peanuts in my mouth. <laughs> and I've been doing it all afternoon. <laughs> so Michael Stipe arrived, you know, my, my biggest hero ever, and Craig's, and we were both fucking battered at this point. And Craig started trying to talk to Michael, and it was just crap, what, Georgia? He was talking like that, like Charlie the Cat with that old lad. <laughs> And as I started trying to talk to Michael Stipe, Georgia said, Clint, show him that, what you're doing, peanuts. No. So I'm doing this, trying to catch peanuts with my, no. and one of them, I swear, bounced off my head onto Michael Stipe's head as I was doing it. <laughs> and it was like, it's like, a, when I woke up there, I was like, did that happen, did that happen? A really bad yeah. nightmare. Yeah. But oh we met him, and um, you know, he was very he was polite with us and civil with us, and oh. he said he'd heard the Inspirals, which I believe he had in, heard of the Inspirals, but, um, Oh. No, I met him and uh, made a twat of myself. Do you know what? <laughs> you, well, I, I can listen to you all day, and I think we should try and get you back on the pyramid stage of Glastonbury this year. Right. I, I think we're going to make it happen. Now, before we let you go, you have to sign, you have to sign the trust. Yeah, TV should we draw a cow on it as well? Desk. Oh, of course. And Spiral's cow. The moo. How did the moo come about? Where did it come from? When I used to live in Oldham, yeah. even before the Inspirals, I was always a, a keen photographer. Yeah. And I ended up living in an house um, where the back garden faced out into a field full of cows, right? <laughs> Now, at the same time, I was working in this mill in Ashton, and one of my mates had a contact at a local photographic supplies company in Manchester. Yeah. And he used to nick films and sell them to me for a quid of time, right? <laughs> so I had loads of Polaroid fil uh, films and um, slide films, no transparency. Yeah. So I was just rattling away, getting these photographs of cows looking over the fence at me, like really close up. Amazing. Cows pissing, cows shit, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and it was all on transparency. So when I started with the Inspirals and we started putting together a, a light show, I mean, I've got bubble light, I've got um, smoke machines. Yeah. And slide projectors. And it was like, we wanted it Pink Floyd sort of style. So I had all these pictures and a lot of them were cows because I'd spent the last 10 years photographing cows. And it came from that because people started mooing at gigs. Yeah. So we'd be playing, there'd be a big cow behind us, and people were like, Boo. and then we made it into a t-shirt. So it was very organic, really, the way it happened. And yeah, it's so <coughs> iconic. I and mean, it's, that, still, it's still there, that's, you know what I mean? That's that. Yeah. Clint Boone, thank you. Thank you very much indeed, man. Always a you. pleasure. Love you so Keep much. Keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs>